Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. So um, on behalf of Healthy Diet for a Healthy Life and the Joint Programming Initiative, FATCHA JPI, Joint Programming Initiative on Agriculture, Food Security, and Climate Change, I'd like to welcome you today to in this lovely, rainy, cold Brussels weather. Um, and so thank you for braving the elements and coming out to, to be with us today. So um, today we are going to talk about policy coherence. And to start, I'd like to remind you, in case, in case you've forgotten, that our issues are urgent, urgent, urgent. Uh, we're facing climate change. We're facing uh, dietary problems with non-communicable diseases in a context in the world right now which is, at best, we can say complicated. And so we need science. And we need that science to be translated into actionable um, uh, into we need actionable research, and we need that also to, um, to be translated into policy. And so before I start, I'd like to, um, to give you a little bit of background. So um, in fact, it's in light of these societal challenges that the joint programming initiatives were started um, back in, actually the idea was in 2008, and um, the first one started in 2009, and then there were two waves that started in 2010 and 2011. So FATCHA JPI has been running since 2010. Um, we um, bring together currently 20 um, um, countries uh, with um, member states, associated countries, and one associated member who is New Zealand. Um, and we uh, focus on questions related to the intersection of agriculture, food security, and climate change. And the ones that are particularly important for today are um, two of our core themes, which are nutrition-sensitive agricultural production for food security and trade-offs and synergies uh, between food production, ecosystems, and climate. And so even right from the beginning, we have this idea of trade-offs. Um, so far, we have um, brought together um, roughly 250 million euros to fund um, about 170 projects. And I invite you to look at our website and as well the FATCHA um, JPI project wheel, which has a summary of all of our projects. Um, HDHL is a um, JPI which has been running also since 2011. Um, it's been self-sustainable for three years. There are 17 uh, members at the moment. They also have a set of three uh, research themes, of which today the one that's perhaps the most relevant is diet, nutrition, and health. There's over 80 projects that have been funded with about 120 million euros. And um, they also are working at this intersection between science and um, policy. So actually, this um, is sort of a... a a long series of uh, events that brings us here today, because actually this work, surprisingly maybe for some of you, started in 2015 at the Expo 2015. And um, uh, we organized a joint event between um, HDHL, FATCHA, and OCEANS, uh, where we were actually looking at um, what our common challenges were. And from this came out a paper. And among the two challenges that we identified, uh, were um, the need for policy coherence. And so here we are, this is actually um, so a third in a series. And in April 2022, uh, FATCHA JPI alone organized a, uh, a first workshop, which was to raise awareness on policy-related trade-offs, um, to look at the barriers uh, for uh, coherence, and also to look at possible solutions. And <clears throat> you have received the report from that workshop. Um, maybe I'll mention in a minute some of the recommendations that came from that. But here we are today, again, with HDHL to look at our common um, uh, challenges related to, uh, to coherence. And um, I think everyone will recognize that this is actually a very complex problem. Um, I don't expect we're going to find all the answers today, unfortunately. Um, but we're going to <laughs> we're going to try and take a, a dive in to see uh, what what we can um, what we can propose. And um, in fact, so today the idea is to look at these complex challenges of policy coherence in the transition to a more sustainable and healthy um, food system. And um, 
What can I say? Um, the first workshop um, uh, was in a very similar format to, to this one. So we had some, some keynote speakers, we had some case studies, and we had breakout groups. And I'm not going to go through all the uh, everything we looked at um, because you have the report. But there were some three recommendations which I'd like to, to just mention because I think they can help us frame our discussions today. Um, one of them is to support transdisciplinary research. Uh, with a focus on science advice to policy. There's a second one, which is that we need to support impact assessment of research and innovation with regard to policy coherence and incoherence. And the third one, and maybe also why we're here today, is to continue the exploratory work on, co on policy coherence for sustainable food systems. And so we're very happy to be here today with HDHL, um, with, um, uh, with FATCHA JPI, to have you to discuss these issues. And um, with that, I think, um, unless Jesse wants to add anything on HDHL, I will hand the word over to um, to our first speaker. And Jesse, are you gonna you're gonna do the the introduction? Okay. <laughs> right. Thank you, Heather, for the, the nice warm welcome. Um, you've all seen our agenda. We're going to be starting today with a opening speech. Um, from Josepina Luvara, um, who is from the European Commission's Director General um, for uh, Research and Innovation, DGRTD. Thank you. So just put you down. Okay, good morning uh, to all, uh, and uh, thank you very much for this uh, invitation. Uh, thank you to Faccia JPI and uh, Healthy Diet and Healthy Life, in particular Cristobal and Jesse, and uh, really the nice also contact uh, and uh, an exchange that we had uh, uh, before this conference. So, um, so Jesse already kindly introduced me, and uh, I'm Giuseppe Alvara. I work in the unit B2 on bioeconomy and food system in DGRTD. And uh, today, so my presentation will focus mainly on the transformation of food uh, system 2030. Maybe you heard about it. And so we will give a little bit, I will give you a little bit more details on that and how indeed the, the research and innovation will, uh, uh, policy will really uh, serve uh, the, um, the European framework uh, uh, in terms of policy, legislation and uh, initiative. So you are familiar with the, we are all familiar with the European Green Deal and uh, you know that it was uh, really uh, mainly about uh, how we are going to improve the well-being of people. And uh, um, to do that, uh, in particular, the focus of the European Green Deal was to look or to making a Europe which is uh, uh, climate neutral and also to protect uh, our natural habitat, but also look, uh, you know, um, in a very, you know, uh, large way also on uh, how uh, the big principle, which is no one will be left behind. The um, European Green Deal, of course, uh, touch uh, several thematic, which go from uh, energy, clean energy, the climate law, the green industry, the pollution, uh, uh, how to eliminate uh, the pollution. But in particular, in the European Green Deal, as you see in these uh, slides, there is uh, one focus, which is the farm to fork strategies. Where in the farm to fork strategies, indeed, uh, is uh, uh, where we are the Commission will look at all the steps of the food system, which goes from the production, the processing and distribution, the consumption, the food loss, and the waste. Now, what is the Food 2030? And because the Food 2030 is a, a policy framework, which was deployed by Horizon Europe, which indeed uh, tackle uh, the main uh, principle coming from the farm to fork strategies and which mainly was uh, in order to see how we are going to see in the future our transformation of the food system which is sustainable. The priority on which the food 2030 is uh, based are nutrition for sustainable and healthy diet, climate, 
so having smart and environmental sustainable food system, circularity with the resource efficiency for the food system, and innovation in order also to empower the community. And the drivers of uh, all the food system uh, policy framework are the research, the innovation investment, open science, and in particular, the international collaboration. So in the Food 2030, what is very important is that we try to set up uh, a systemic approach. When this is a systemic approach, we are also not only looking at research per se, but also to scaling up all the innovation that result from research. The Food 2030 is also, um, let's say, um, articulated in, uh, uh, with the ten pathways. And the, these pathways, they touch the governance, the urban food and food transformation, the safety of food, uh, the part of the uh, related to the aquaculture, the microbiome, the nutrition and uh, health, and also uh, food system for Africa, and the part that is also related to the personalized nutrition. In this pathway, uh, since I think it was already started at the end of uh, uh, Horizon 2020, we founded uh, um, more than hundred of project with a budget of 760 million of euros. And as you can see here, you will see a little bit the number of different projects that have been funded through the different pathways and which touch a little bit all the priorities. So it's not something that you said, I look at the pathway of nutrition and health and is only on nutrition. There is a little bit also of a goal and priority which come from the climate, which come from the circularity, which comes also for the well-being of the citizen. It's a sort of um, interdisciplinary and which really also involve all the actors of the supply chain, the producer, the processor, the distributor, the policymaker, the researcher, and the citizen. We will uh, soon, uh, in a few days, we will also publish the, the, uh, the updating report on the Food 2030, which uh, indeed uh, I will send you also the web link when it will be published. Uh, and I really invite you to, to, to read. Uh, because uh, in this, uh, what is the novelty of this uh, report is a little bit uh, indeed uh, to look at uh, all the, um, the impact, the geopolitical changes that we had in the last years, but also to add uh, a, a new pathway, which is the zero pollution food system, which is part of the European Green Deal, part of the Farm to Fork, and we will be added uh, also for the new funding and new opportun opportunities in Horizon Europe. <coughs> this is a, a slide which uh, I take from the uh, European Environment Agency. They published uh, this year uh, a report, which really, uh, it's a very interesting report because it looks a little bit on the policy mix in Europe, all the initiatives we have in Europe, and uh, how uh, the food system is located uh, in these key European policies and uh, strategies. And as you can see, we start, uh, it's a sort of, of uh, different, uh, you know, circle, uh, which have a total interconnectivity. So we start uh, with the focus, which is the common agricultural po policy, the common fishery policy, the farm to fork strategy, the general law of legislation, directive, regulation, plant health, on food packaging, on the regulation of deforestation-free product, on the food information for consumer. But also, if you can see, indeed, we have several different strategy and initiative at the European level where I really tackle everything, tackle the soil, tackle the circular economy, tackle the European beating cancer plan, which is indeed an, an impact on, um, and there is, is interconnected also with the food system. And Horizon Europe is there indeed because it is the policy instrument that really serve 
on the transformation of food system and serve also to the implementation of a lot of union legislation. What are the challenges? The challenges indeed are the geopolitical stability. We have seen in Ukraine the attack, the Russian attack to Ukraine, how all the food security stability was completely challenges. The uh, climate change, the biodiversity loss, the environmental pollution, but also, you know, the disparity in the supply chain, the social inequality. So, and this is something that I want really to stress because the social dimension is also always part of these challenges and is something that is always addressed also in the food system policy. The cultural attitude, you see, also between member states, the difference of culture also between the, the citizens, the malnutrition and health. We have a really a healthy impact in, in the poor countries, but not only related to malnutrition because they miss the food, but it's also the way how really they approach to healthy diet. And the sustainable food system cannot only rely on individual consumer alone. This is something that we need to keep in mind. And that's why there is an, a need to have evidence-based policies and also to strengthen the policy coherence. And this is something that was also highlighted in the two important reports, one of the European Commission Group of Chief Scientific Advisors and the other one of EEA that I just illustrated the slides before. And another challenge is, is the synergies within, between the union uh, financial program. You know that uh, in the MFF 2021-2027, we have a several uh, union instruments. And we try, and then later I will give you also an example, uh, the Commission try always to ensure the synergies and the complementarity of the several financial programs. But keeping in mind that each financial program has also different aim. So this is uh, something important. So you, we don't create a synergy because it's written in the legislation, but because we see the opportunity really to have such synergies between the union uh, uh, financial programs. And then another challenge is, is the global dimension. So it's important that uh, what is discussed in the UN Food System Summit, and the reason was in 2021, is also, you know, the recommendations are also implemented and are also considered at national level, member states, but also in the regional and local, you know, um, reality of member states. And so also take into account in the several national strategy on food system. Now, to address these challenges, of course, uh, the role of a, the different actor is crucial. And uh, what is important? It's important that we ensure a continuous and transparent dialogue between the actor in the supply chain. And the actor of the supply chain uh, the producer, are the distributors, but are the consumer, and largely, I want to stress the citizen. Citizens play an important role in the supply chain. So, through this dialogue, we identify the gaps and we find the solution. Of course, the supply chain doesn't go alone, and the European institutions play an important role because we need that this dialogue between the stakeholders is always open and transparent with the European institutions. Not only the Commission, I'm here in the, for the Commission side, but also the Parliament, the Council, the Member States, all the European institutions. And of course, the research innovation policy play an important role. It's really the convener and the glue for all to ensure that all the European policy really they interact in a systemic approach. We need, of course, to ensure the consistency between the European and the non-European policy, but we need also that we consider what is done outside of Europe, but we need also to promote what is done in Europe, outside Europe. So, the international scenario play an important role in this. And of course, we need also to reflect on the 
situation of different the reality of the different member states and also in the reality of uh, at the regional and the local level in each member states. Now, in order to address the EU policy, the important is also how to see the European funding instrument works and why. You see in these slides that uh, I put Horizon Europe is in the centre of uh, several uh, uh, union uh, uh, instruments and indeed uh, all the call, uh, all partnership, uh, all the grants that are funded by Horizon Europe have always a link with the different uh, union programme in order to ensure that indeed we have uh, also a coherence and synergy between the different union policy. And you see here example of topics uh, that really uh, tackle, uh, for example, the part of digital, so a link with the digital euro program, topic that uh, a link with the live program, topic that a link with the, um, the Erasmus, with the single market program. So this is an example in which indeed it gives you a little bit the idea how the union program really are there also to facilitate the uh, coherence between the union policy. This is an example that uh, I like a little bit to, to, to bring in the pres uh, I, I wanted to, to take in this presentation because it's the class six, it's the class where my unit indeed the work is the part of the bioeconomy and where the, uh, bio, the food system is located. And, and they are indeed in all the, uh, in the work program of uh, uh, Horizon Europe, uh, and in particular in class six, uh, you see how we try always to work together with, uh, between the different uh, missions, uh, partnerships uh, that we have in Horizon in order to ensure that indeed we have this and we maintain this uh, coherence. Is how indeed uh, through also the class six, we try to boost these synergies within Horizon Europe through the different partnership and mission. You see the mission soil, the mission on climate change, but also with the different programs like LIFE, like the European Social Funds and the Digital Europe, of course, because it's the digitalization one of the, also one of the priorities. In Horizon uh, Europe, we also established a European partnership, uh, which really uh, allowed uh, to, um, through the different clusters, health, the digital, the climate, uh, they also allowed uh, this uh, um, continuous dialogue uh, of uh, stakeholders. But it's not only dialogue of the stakeholder in one specific clusters. It's a dialogue of stakeholder that they try also to have, a, as is written there, a multi-stakeholder approach, really working also within the different uh, uh, call, within the different clusters. And why that? Because indeed we consider that uh, this uh, is an important factor to speed up a research and innovation activity and try also to rationalize the work, try to go with a specific goal, with a specific target, uh, and, uh, uh, and not dispersing you know, the, the resources uh, a little bit uh, uh, without any specific uh, uh, outcome and results. I don't know if you are familiar, uh, but uh, um, we will launch next year this uh, Sustainable Food System Partnership, uh, which uh, uh, will uh, look a little bit, uh, it will be launched by uh, SCAR, and this is, uh, will look a little bit on uh, how the European food system will look in 2050. So we will go a little beyond also 2030. And we try also to interconnect a little bit uh, all these uh, uh, different, uh, you know, sector, different priority, different uh, strategies. And uh, it's, uh, uh, what will be important in this partnership is that uh, we will try to harmonize of the 
EU-wide policy and strategies, but we will also look at the global initiative. So, because, as I said before, there is always a contest, an international contest, that we, indeed, we are in this international contest, and we play an important role in the international contest. So um, this is a, a little bit uh, what the partnership uh, will do, also to try to uh, co-create with the various actors, different groups, uh, in order really to uh, support uh, the goal of the sustainable uh, food system in 2050. The partnership mainly, indeed, they will look, and this is also to give you an idea how we will try also to put together the different policy, in the four, you know, um, squared here that are there, which are very important, because one is how we are going to change the way we eat. We need to eat safe, healthy, sustainable. We need also to think about uh, uh, dietary shift. We need also to look at the way how we are going to process and supply food. So in order to ensure the goal of the carbon neutrality and circularity, we need us also to see how we are going to change the, the governance of our system by indeed uh, looking at the part of uh, the national uh, territories, uh, European, uh, but also the global. And then we need also to change the way how we are going to connect with the food system uh, through the citizen, so the engagement of the citizen, and now also we are going to uh, increase uh, the trust of consumer on healthy diet in particular, but how we are going to transform the food system. This partnership has been created uh, through the Standing Committee on Agriculture and Research, where we have uh, Member States, Ministry from Health and also Agriculture participated in this uh, SCAR meeting and usually we also invite uh, in, the, in our uh, uh, discussion, in our plenary, also experience from uh, different people that want also to bring the result or particular uh, um, activity, working activity that have been funded by Horizon. And, uh, in conclusion, uh, you know, given the policy context, uh, all this uh, mix of policy, which that seems to look a little bit uh, uh, to have a different goal, I would say they have uh, one ultimate goal, if you see a little bit all together. Uh, yes, science has an important role uh, that play in order really to converge and to look at the complexity of the food system transition. And a research innovation policy, of course, is a neutral multi-actor. Mm? And uh, we try to involve uh, all the stakeholders, the experts and scientists that really can also help in achieving also the ambitions, the ambitions of the European Green Deal. And Horizon Europe, indeed, uh, provide uh, important funding, important opportunity in order to help this uh, transition for a resilient and sustainable food system. I want to also to conclude with uh, one important event that we will have at the 4th and the 5th of December. I don't know if you already registered. Uh, and this is uh, a conference that uh, will uh, really put all together uh, different uh, uh, stakeholders, but also important, uh, you know, speaker from the international, uh, uh, you know, um, like WHO, FAO, etc. Uh, we have already 400 people registered in attendance, so I'm sorry to say we cannot allow any more people to come to Charlemagne, but Online, we will always provide the WebEx link online, so you can, of course, uh, participate online. And with that, I want really to thank you again for your attention, and uh, thank you again for the organizing this event.